Hey everybody, First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. Here, let me fix the... There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. That works. Sorry about that. Um, this was the latest 5 o'clock update for my Ready, Set, Go map. And a lot of this has not changed, and I'll show you why in a minute. But I wanted to reiterate the people in Florida need to still be ready. It's about three to five days out from imp impacting you. But here in the Carolinas, less of an impact. Let's go right to the satellite uh, loop because this kind of shows you what's going on tonight. Hurricane hunters are currently out there in the storm and they are finding that the storm is getting stronger. So there's indications that the eye is beginning to reform and the pressure's falling and we're starting to see uh, potentially the storm starting to intensify again after it did so a little bit yesterday and then kind of flatlined for the last couple of days. Let me widen this out a little bit and I'll kind of show you the bigger picture. Uh, it's definitely been moving west northwest at around 13 miles an hour. I will show you the uh, latest advisory here. Um, that was at, out at 5 p.m. This is what it looks like here. Winds were 85. The 11 p.m. will be in in about an hour or so. Um, if we go out into the future here, I don't know why this is not plotting now. What's going on here? There we go. Um, so you can see the movement here through Saturday. I can tell you this is the five o'clock one. The new one is going to be even slower. If there's one thing I could tell you tonight, this thing is going to slow down big time as it approaches Florida. Um, and where it actually goes in Florida, it could be up here, it could be down here, but there's a tendency in some of the recent trends for a stalling and a recurve to the north. Um, the stalling is also an indication that the storm is trying to churn. It might meander around here through Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, so it's not going to be in a big hurry to move. And the biggest concern with that stalling is obviously it's going to be a huge wind event for Florida, um, big surge event as well. But the other big concern is then going to be huge flash flood threat um, and tons of water over Florida. Now, down the road, I know folks in the Carolinas watching me right now want to know where it's going from there. Um, you're still in the pay attention mode up here. I will tell you this, anybody up in the Carolinas, do not cancel weekend plans at the beach. Um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, no issues whatsoever. If we see impacts in the Carolinas, it won't be till the middle of next week. And just to show you um, kind of my need to know graphic, I think this is the way to look at it tonight, is that 
Um, no direct impacts for the Carolinas this weekend. That includes Monday through Labor Day. Higher tides and rip currents along the coast. Possible Florida landfall Monday or into Tuesday. The, the timing is going to be depending on how much it slows down. Um, slowing down over Florida into early next week and a major hurricane at, at landfall. So it's going to be a significant storm when it makes landfall. Now, what's going on with the steering currents? I think this is the million dollar question. Um, why is it going to stall? Well, a couple things here. This is our big driver here. This high pressure is going to push it up to about here. Once it gets here, there are big signs that this high pressure to the north and maybe even this one builds so far to the west um, that it blocks it and it kind of gets stuck down here for a while until this ridge either backs out, um, a trough comes down, or something else kicks it out of there. But the steering currents basically go completely away and the thing just kind of sits there. So that's the, the huge question is where does that churn occur? Now, I was showing earlier, I was posting about the models. People get really caught up on individual spaghetti plots and I understand why because I mean, you know, you're trying to figure out information. I was just running the numbers, but because the models are run four times a day, and what, where's my math here? I started looking at this. Four times a day, there's 13 main tropical models plus another 71 ensemble members of the GFS um, and the Euro. That's about 84 different spaghetti plots over, uh, you know, a, a four-day period, which is 16 different runs. That's like 1,344 different model runs. Um, so getting stuck on one little piece of spaghetti or a track is really not the way to forecast. It's also not real healthy. It's really a way to worry yourself to death. Um, so we look at the holistic thing. What I mean by that is we look at everything in total. It's not one model, one model run, one piece of data. We start looking at trends. And one of the things, and I can tell you this is how we look at this guidance, you see a big bunch of spaghetti here um, and a bunch of different tracks. And if you live under one of those tracks, you're, fo you're hyper-focused uh, so if you live right here, you're like, oh, AP12, it's coming right at me. And if you live right here, you're worried about this model. If you're in Miami, you're like, look at that model. In reality, those are outliers. We would just completely throw those out and we look for the, the mean, which is the trend here. And if you look at the trend along range, there's a trend for this recurvature here. So real, really good consistent track and then a recurve like this. The problem is this timing up here people in the Carolinas where, where I'm forecasting from and you know on my viewing area they say oh it's coming up here but the time frame of this is like next Friday next Saturday it's not this weekend it's not even early next week it's like you know it's 168 hours into the future and if it's over land this whole time if you look at the intensity guidance um, it's a tropical depression or nothing it's going to be rain, which we know in the Carolinas, we don't joke with the rain because it's Matthew and Florence tell us the rain's a big deal. But from a tropical storm or hurricane standpoint, it wouldn't still be a system um, like that. It would just be a giant flooding rainstorm, which is what we're concerned about. But if it stays in one of these open water ones, then it's more of an issue. So if you're in the Carolinas and you're worried about this storm, you don't have to worry this weekend. Um, you have to worry the middle and end of next week. If it comes straight up like this, that's a problem. But look at 95% of the guidance isn't there. It's over here. So it's real easy to get stuck in this. And again, these models will run again tonight at 2 a.m., tomorrow at 8 a.m., again um, at 2 p.m., and then at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. So you can see these are going to be rerun and all this spaghetti is going to be thrown back out there. Um, and so getting stuck on one single run of one thing is, is not, we take all of this and start trending it out and figure out what's going to happen with it. And that's really kind of the way um, you need to look at it. So again, the rainfall is going to be a big issue eventually with this system after it's crushing landfall where it is. And if you look at the rainfall forecast for the next seven days, it, it kind of tells a story of, of that trend in the tracks to kind of take it up along the coast. But again, this rain up here isn't happening until next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's not happening this weekend. Though there could be some rain there, but it's from a completely different system. It's a cold front. Um, you can see it's slowing down here because that's where the heaviest rain is. It sits there, comes in here, and does one of these. Now this churn, this churn could be here. It still could be here, by the way, but it could be here. So that's a that's that's the most uh, uncertain part of the forecast. This part is the most certain. Up to this point, I feel really confident this thing's going to be somewhere in this vicinity come Monday afternoon. So that's pretty much... Oh, and I went away for a second there. Let me refresh. 
see even the camera doesn't like the forecast so um that's kind of the latest what i'm thinking right now so for folks in florida watching you should be in your set mode right now i think uh tomorrow into saturday we're going to be in that one to th we're going to be in the three day range um so make sure you're you know you're inside the forecast cone now which is all this area um, plan and prepare for a storm i see a lot of folks buying up all the water and stuff down in florida um, it's a good idea to do that. Remember, you don't need bottled water. If you have water at your house, just fill up containers. It doesn't have to be bottled water. We run into that issue in the Carolinas all the time. It's like, it's before the storm. You got time to just turn the spigot on and fill up uh, a container with water. You don't need to go buy bottled water. Um, just get containers that hold water and fill it up in your house. It's also good to get buckets of water in case you want to flush your toilet or, or wash things if you lose water. Um, and also, you know, you need about three to five days worth of food. Um, and all your supplies and if you're told to evacuate which will probably start happening this weekend um, you're going to have a couple days to evacuate the, and send you north so that's kind of the latest tonight we will continue to do these as we get closer but we've got time that's the key part of this there's a ton of time um, before it heads our way one more one graphic i want to show again because this has been very successful at kind of showing people what's going on here um, and i actually have to update this um, but this is the gfs in euro through saturday and I'm going to stop this thing Sunday morning. So you can see Sunday morning, both the GFS and Euro have it off the coast here in the Bahamas. Still pretty nice weather on Sunday, honestly. Um, we go through Sunday night. I'll stop it at 7 p.m. We're going to start to see some wind and some swells and probably some squalls. Euro is a little bit further south. The GFS is north. I'm going to go to Monday morning. Look how much it slowed down. I jumped another 12 hours there. And it's still not just barely coming short. GFS is a little quicker. Euro is lagging behind. But look at the time frame, 7 a.m. Then we'll go into Monday afternoon, 7 p.m. Look how slow that is. Um, there's the GFS. The Euro is way down here. And again, this is all the latest run of these major models. Um, you can see at 10 a.m. But, you know, honestly, people see that split and they go, oh, they're not in agreement. That's actually, for being this far out, the fact that they're so, that's, pretty close together the timing issue is the biggest thing i noticed they're a little bit off on timing um so this is 8 p.m look at this 8 p.m on 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 tuesday so again up in the carolinas people are like oh man it's tuesday and it's still down in central or southern florida here we go 7 a.m wednesday um it's still over florida now the euro is hugging the coast a little more which means more of it's over water um, the slower movement doesn't only mean it's going to dump a ton of rain. Surge is going to be an ongoing issue. Um, and upwelling hopefully will help cool the waters off, but that's another issue um, to see if the upwelling takes over. We'll go through Thursday morning. Stop this Thursday morning. And the Euro and GFS are actually kind of together something up in the Jacksonville area. So this is a long duration event. That's why folks in Florida, Jacksonville up to Savannah prepare for a long storm you can't prepare for this to be in and out you need to be ready for days of just rain and possible flooding then up in the Carolinas you could see it moving along the coast so along the coast of the Carolinas our issues are probably going to be Friday um, and again it looks like the winds could be around 50 miles an hour it could be some gust up there close to 60 uh, maybe 75 it doesn't look to be a hurricane at this point unless the GFS stays offshore and then Saturday, and you see it moving off the coast, and who knows? I'm not going to get into voodoo land there, but that just kind of shows you kind of what can happen in the long range and how how long this thing could sit over you. So expect the 11 o'clock advisory out any minute, and I fully expect it to be slower and maybe curving a little bit more at the end um, and showing a, a stall over Florida, which is not good news for Florida. So I hope that helps everybody tonight. Um, I will do a vlog tomorrow on my Facebook page. Stay tuned for that when the 11 a.m. advisory comes out, and we'll keep you up to date. Prepare, prepare, prepare now in Florida. You need to get ready for a long-duration event. You still have plenty of time to get ready. You've got all day tomorrow and all weekend before this thing starts to impact you on Monday. Monday night is when you need to have everything. Really, Monday during the day. I would say midday Monday. Things should really – you should be done, and, and things uh, should be ready to go. Um, so stay tuned for that update coming up tonight at 11. I'll see you guys then.